Amen. What's up, Relentless Youth? Woo! Amen. Touch your neighbor, give him a high five, and say, I believe. You can have a seat. You believe? Amen. Okay, can I give you some feedback right now if you can fix up? And I am Pastor Lisa. My husband, Pastor Ken and I, we started New Hope Las Vegas over 21 years ago. Woo! Okay, I don't know if you know our story, but the Lord called us. We are originally from Oahu, Hawaii, and God called us over 21 years ago to come to Las Vegas to start this church. And look around. Look at you guys, you know, to see uh, the Lord had you in mind when we came to this church. And so we're so blessed to um, be serving alongside you guys. And I just want to give a hand to Miss Ashley Eha and her amazing youth coaches. Give a hand right, for leading uh, this amazing team. And I heard you guys had a great time at camp. Who went to camp? Yeah, all right. Amen. So blessed. Well, we're going to continue our message series on becoming relentless. That's your name, right? Relentless youth, right? That's like a rim. Um, so the question is, what does it mean to be relentless? Hmm. Well, God, God calls us as believers to be determined, to uh, be persistent, never giving up. That's what relentless means. And so when you are relentless, you will continue to pursue the Lord. And God, I believe God gave uh, this youth ministry that name Relentless because I know you folks love the Lord. You want to pursue the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you guys will never give up. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, it says in 1 Timothy 4.12, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. But what you have to do, be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. And I know this, um, you know, this message series, you guys have been seeing some amazing messages, um, and especially in the area of purity. So today, my message is called Make Clean, and we're going to learn how to live a life of purity before the Lord, and keeping a heart clean before God. So can we pray before we start? Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've made, and I thank you for all the youth here, Lord. I thank you for their lives. I pray, God, that they will receive this word, Lord God. Take it to heart, Lord, that they are loved, God, that you love them. And that because you are a holy and pure God, Lord Jesus, we as your children will be holy and pure as well. So thank you for this youth today in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen. So, I love to interact with my audience, so it's an interaction time, so please participate. Okay, so when I ask you a question, you have to respond enthusiastically. Everybody go, Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Let me hear enthusiasm. Come on! Woo! Come on. These are you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my husband and I were you. Uh, ministers back in Hawaii, and I love working with you. But you guys got to have that passion and fire. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you are good at keeping your room clean? Ooh. Okay, on a scale from one to ten, how good are you keeping, good at keeping your room clean? Two to ten. Now, uh, if, if, if I say, how good are you from one to ten, if you say, I'm pretty good, Pastor Lisa, I wake up at eight or ten, then you would go like, hi, oh, yeah, I, I'm pretty OCD, yeah, yeah, I'm a clean freak, I like cleaning my room every day, I vacuum every day, I'm off and that's okay, so that, but if you're like, ah, I'm okay, I'm like about a five or six, or maybe seven, then you would do like this, like halfway, okay, but then if you like, oh, no, Pastor Lisa, so I'm like one or two, maybe negative, yes. well, and then, just do that, okay? Show me, show me what you, uh, where you at? How you rate yourself? Is it, oh, yeah, I'm also deep. <laughs> or, ah, okay. Okay, right. or like, okay, let me see. Show it up, put it up here so I can see. Okay, let's see some thumbs up. Let's see some side thumbs and some down. Ooh, oh, okay. You can do two 
pillow so I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Be honest. How about that back row? I don't see any thumbs. Come on, guys, that participate. All of you guys. Let's go. Let me see. Even the coaches, because I like to see if you're keeping your room clean. <laughs> we can look around. Okay, good. I love the openness and the honesty. Well, you know, I have two kids, I don't know if you know, but my sons are Lucas and Landon. So growing up, I'd be like, come on, kids, keep your room clean. In fact, a lot of times, because they're boys, I would go in the room, I'm like, I can't even walk through your room. I'm like, mm, kicking clothes. And I'm like, is this clean? They're like, I don't know. She so pick them and smell it. But it's not okay, I don't, I don't put them on. You know, boys, right, they don't care. I just put the old cologne on. How many of you, with the ones who did this, who did this? Show me. So like you get like dirty dishes in your room. Like jugs. That's a sister. <laughs> dirty dishes. Oh, your, the food that you got. The, the trash. You can hardly walk to your room. Yeah. 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 All your stuff. Everything's like a bomb went off. Right? Right? Yeah. But you know what? Even adults are messy too. Right? We all, we all have our mess. And God understands. Right? He understands us just because our room is dirty. Don't judge me. <laughs> so I want you guys to talk to me. Just say, I'm all right. I'm all right. God, loves me anyway. God loves me anyway. Turn to your neighbor and say, You all right? I'm all right. I guess. <laughs> I guess. No. God loves you. So you know what? Nobody is perfect. Right? Because why? We are all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all fall short, right? In fact, the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, it says, for all have sinned, all, everybody sinned, and fall short of God's glory, the best of God, for God. Um, so what the scripture means, and I, you know, I, I'm a, I was a next-gen pastor for many years, and I've taught a lot of young people and their children, when I share the scripture, the kids, when I talk to kids, they're just like, oh, they put their head down. Pastor, he said bad. I said, no, no, that scripture's not saying you're bad. The Bible is not there to, be, you know, hit yourself over the head with. What the Bible says, all of sin, because we're all human. If you guys read way back in the book of Genesis in the Bible, it all started with who? The two people. Adam, Adam and Eve, right? God said, don't eat from this tree. You can eat from any other tree. But not this one. And what they do? They eat from this one. Just like us, right? Kind of like, don't do this. Don't do Don't do that. Don't do this. And what you do? Uh, I, I do that. <laughs> That's human nature. Um, but they sin, and it, the Bible says they brought sin into the world. And that's what happens. So even a baby born into the world, you think, oh, so pure, the baby is so, you know. Oh. Well, that baby is born with a sin nature. And how I know them when they become older and toddlers, they're like, give me that, it's mine. They get all selfish, it's like hitting each other. You know, toddlers, right? Even as kids get older. So it's like, how is that? I didn't teach my kid that. Well, it's, it, it's a sin nature. Something that we are born with. And so the Bible says that we have fall short, this is God, fall short of God's best. Because how many of you know we serve a pure and holy God? God is 100% holy, just like Jesus. He never sinned. And that just blows my mind that Jesus was so sinless. And yet because we are a human, part of mankind, we are full of sin. See, the Bible says sin separates us from God. And that breaks our, God's heart. He doesn't want to be separated from us. But that's what sin does. It separates us from the Lord. And so it doesn't matter how hard you try. Oh, I try to be a good person. I try to treat people nice. I go to church. You think that won't be good enough for me to go to heaven? And that's a lot of times a lot of people, they try to do that. Even other religions try to do that. No knock against other religions. But we preach the Bible, the Word of God, and so this is not Pastor Lisa's opinion. This is from the Word of God. So I'm teaching you what God's Word says. So sin separates us from the Lord. 
So there was a problem there. So what did God do? He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth to die for you and I. Jesus is the bridge that bridges us to the Lord. He is the one, because there's like this huge divide. I call it the great divide. There's God on the side, there's us. And God wants that relationship with us, but there's that great divide and sin is in the way. So he brought Jesus Christ to come to teach us amazing things from his word, but that he came to die for our sins so that through Christ, we would accept salvation have our sins be cleansed and removed and be made holy again. That is the gospel message, you know, <laughs> summarize. So let's talk a little bit about sin and what that is. So we're all sin. Anything that goes against God's word is sin. So God's word is the standard that we all stand by and we live upon. And that's why we teach the word of God to you every week so you know what God's standard is. Anything that falls short of God's word, like going against God's word, disobedience and all that, is sin. So you're like, shh, yeah, Pastor, I sin every day. And I do too. <laughs> We're all human. It's nothing to be ashamed of to say, yeah, I have a sin problem. However, this is what God did as he sent Jesus Christ to come to this earth to die for our sins. We can accept Christ in our hearts to come and be our Lord and Savior. See, if you look at sin, it's like cancer. I don't know if you guys know of anyone who had cancer before. But cancer spreads throughout the body and it, it will kill you if not treated. It's just like sin. But sometimes some, some people would say, so I sinned and then I'm going to sin again tomorrow and ask God for forgiveness and I'm going to sin again and again. And can we be real here? I know young people, you guys struggle with, with different things. And let's talk about sin. You know, when we did youth years ago, many of them said, yeah, yeah, so I had sex. And I want to keep doing it. I'm going to ask God for forgiveness, but I'm going to keep doing it. So why should I even ask God for forgiveness? It's kind of like saying, oh, I'm so dirty today. Well, why should I take a bath? Because I'm going to get dirty tomorrow. Does that make sense? Because sin is like cancer. If you're not dealing with that sin and you just let it go, go. Nothing happened to me. Okay, I, I lied, I, I cheated on my tests, I did these things. Well, nothing happened to me, I'm still good. Sin is like a cancer. You may not see the consequences, but in time, you will. And God sees that. And God is saying, hey, you have that in your life? I don't want you to go through life with that because sin will grow and it will start to fester in your life. And then you talk about sex right now. If you want to continue that, see, sin, uh, sex was not made to be outside of marriage. This is God's blessing marriage. And this is any kind of sex, lust, perversion, pornography. Taken outside sex, especially taken outside of the covenant of marriage, it's like fire, right? Just think if I had this ball of fire in my hands, what's going to happen to me? It's going to burn, right? So God says fire can be destructive or it can be helpful, right? If it's cold, I put a fireplace. So fire, if I put it in a fireplace, oh, it's contained. Oh, I can use a fireplace to cook stuff, right? To uh, keep things warm. But taken out of that covering, it's going to destroy you. And my heart is that for all of you to make wise choices as we teach you the word of God. Because know that sin will catch up with you one day. And I don't want to see that because I minister. I'm a women's pastor here. And I hear stories every day of women that say, Oh, pastors, I made wrong decisions as a young person, as a young adult. And I paid a price, you know, I got pregnant when I was young. And I either aborted the child, which caused me so much pain. I ended up uh, a single parent, which has caused me so much pain today. Or I ended up marrying the guy, which... I have made a wrong choice and it's causing me such pain today. Now I'm divorced and I am lost. So know that sin brings consequences and that's God's heart. He doesn't want us to have consequences. He wants us to live a pure and holy life before him. So if you can put up this scripture, Psalm, found in Psalms 119.9. 
And it says this, how can a young person stay pure? And what is the answer? What do you guys read up here? Everybody say it together. God's word. The Bible says, your word is a light unto my feet and a, and a, a light unto my path. It's, your, it's my guide. It tells me. It's like an instruction book. In fact, B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. It says basic instructions before leaving earth. It instructs me on how to live. It's a life manual. And you know what trips me out as a pastor? People are like, I'm just going to do one thing. You know, I have a boyfriend. I'm just living on. I'm like, let's get married. No, no. no. Our relationship is going to work. Uh, well, you don't want to listen to God's word. You want to do your own thing and live with that person, have sexual relations outside of marriage. Good luck. Because this is what I tell them. Do you want your relationship blessed? And I'll ask you that. Do you want your life to be blessed? Do you want your relationships to be blessed? Do you want school to be blessed? Then you need to do it God's way. And you will find blessings in that. And that is our hearts as leaders, as pastors, is to see your life get blessed. So you may think, oh, so how can to be perfect? No. See, let me, listen to this. Look up to me. Look at this. Listen to me. God doesn't expect perfection from you. But what he's looking for is progress. We are, I told you what I said, we are human beings. We falter. We have weaknesses. But like it says here, he does not look for perfection because only one person was perfect. It was Jesus. But he's looking for progression. Are you growing in Christ? Are you doing your best? I'm reading my word, Pastor Lisa. I'm trying my best. Okay, I falter. You know, I, I, I stumble and fall, but I get up. I dust myself off, and I keep walking towards the Lord. That is the heart that God is looking for. He ain't looking for perfection, because nobody's perfect, but are we progressing? Are we growing closer to the Lord? Are you becoming more uh, patient, more kind, more loving, especially to those in your family, to your mom, your dad, your siblings, right? Uh, God is looking for Christ, the Christ in you to live out for the world. And as you do that, your friends will say, wow, something different, something's different about you. Something is different. You're not like all, all of us, you know? You're very kind, considerate, passionate, you're helpful, you're loving. Something's different about you. And you're gonna know, you're gonna tell them, you know what it is? It's Jesus, it's Jesus in me, amen? amen. And so we talked about Jesus and what he did for us. And so I wanna teach you this next term and we can do the next slide. We call it, when you receive salvation through Jesus, we call it tabula rasa, which means clean slate. Everybody repeat after me, tabula Rasa. 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 Rasa, right? It's a Greek word for clean. Everybody do this. Clean slate. Put your hands. Clean, clean slate. slate. It's like if you had this plate this, with all kind of junks on top, and I'm like, ah, I'm just going to clean slate. I'm start again. And that's what it means to come to Christ. You have a clean slate before the Lord. And so I encourage you to get water baptized. That's another opportunity to have that clean slate before the Lord. God gives us a way out. We accept Christ in our hearts, and we say, Lord, I'm on a clean slate, Lord. I just, I made mistakes in the past, Lord. Please help me, I wanna, I wanna give my life anew to you. So God gives you that clean slate. But then you say, hey, Pastor Reese, I'm a Christian. I accepted Christ a while ago. I even got water baptized, and I still sin. And God understands that. We're not perfect. So that's why he's given us the way to come before the Lord. The Bible says if we confess our sins unto God, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every day. It's like taking a bath every day. I just come before you cleanse. Because, you know, we take a shower, we're cleaning our physical bodies. Confession, forgiveness is cleaning your soul before the Lord. No matter if you come to him 10, 20 times a day, which I used to do, especially when I was a young person, God, forgive me. Oh, I messed up. Sorry, God. 
Please forgive me and cleanse me from all righteousness, Lord. Come and just calm my heart. You know, uh, back when I was in high school, I grew up not knowing the Lord. Our family did not go to church. And it was only in my senior year that my friend started to share Christ with me. And she actually invited me to church my senior year. And all that I was going through at that time, I needed the Lord. In fact, I got my first boyfriend. And but our relationship with Sour, right after, right, right after our graduation, we broke up. We were only together like six months. But you know, for those of you who are in relationships or who were in relationships, that can really hurt. And I was really lost. And then I started drinking with my friends because I thought, oh, that's that's the way to melt my pain. And so I remember it was one graduation party when I was 18. Uh, I went outside of the house and I was looking up in the sky and I said, God, if you're real, I need your help that I'm so lost, I'm so hurt, broken hearted. I, I don't have purpose in life, I'm just lost. I know many of you probably cried that, God, are you real, are you there? I said, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. Show yourself to me. And I just, just walked away. Well, my friend connected with me. She was attending that church that I would visit from time to time. You see, I was just a church attender. I wasn't into it like all the other kids. I would go to church on Sunday and then live like the devil during the whole week, you know? Um, she said, oh, there's a youth camp. A youth camp coming this summer. Come, check us out. Even the youth leader. I was like, ah. She goes, hey. This, is, this, church, this church camp is from all the different churches in the area. And I was like, ooh, maybe I meet a Christian guy. You know, that comes to your mind, right? And guess what? I did meet a Christian guy there. And his name was Jesus. <laughs> he came into my life. I was so broken, so lost. He came into my life. I had never been the same. I went to college that following year. Thank God, because when you guys go to college, it is such a worldly place, so easy to get pulled down, you know? Um, I went to college, and, and you know, the rest is history of how the Lord, what the Lord has done in my life. So I know what you guys go through. There's a lot of pressure, temptation, struggles, but Jesus is there for you. He hears your cries. And if you're like, God, where are you? Show yourself to me. I challenge you. If you're like, question, is there a God? Pray that. Is there a God that show yourself to me? I, I want to know if you're real, Lord. I want to live for you, God. Because the pain in my heart is just so, so much. God, I need you, Lord. We all need Jesus, amen? Amen. amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our head. And I want to pray for you. Before I pray, I want to ask if you have never accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as a Lord and Savior, you may have come to you, you know what you can, and said, okay, God, still checking you out, still wonder if you're real. It's okay. God doesn't get hurt. <laughs> but you're like, you know what, Lord, I want to really take that step of faith and say yes to you, Lord. I want to give you a try. That work in me, heal my heart, forgive me my sins. That is what Jesus came for you. He loves you so much. So that's you, with all eyes closed and head bowed. If you want to accept Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, can you lift your hands up high? I would love to. after me. Let's all of us do it, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess my sins. Please forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I say this so you can hear me, God. Even my neighbor can hear me. 
even the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I belong to him in Jesus' name. We all said, Amen. Amen. The Bible says your name is now written in the book of life. You know, there's a book of life. So when you, when you pass from this earth to go to heaven, God's going to open up that book and say, Ah, I see your name here. I see your name. Enter in to the joy of your salvation. Amen. Amen. We have a gift for you. If you can put up the lights a little bit right now, we have a gift for those who uh, have said yes to him. You can open up some lights and then wanna, for those of you accepted Christ, uh, the coaches will come around and, and give gifts. Uh, amen. You can raise your hand. We will bless you with a gift today. Amen. Amen. last words he said is it is finished so we are going to do uh, an exercise right now we're going to pass out the uh, this handout I don't know if you can actually you pull up the lights here so they can have time to see that you're going to be receiving this, uh, this paper, these two papers and this is more of a um, instruction for you and then this half sheet you also be getting a marker and then just hold off. Don't start until I say it. Make sure you put your name on the top of the sheet, please, so we can make sure that you get that. Put your name on the top. So this exercise is called Clean Slate. And as you get your paper, you look at the instruction number one it says ask yourself do I need to ask God to forgive me of any of my sins because Jesus wants to set you free and give you a clean slate to restore your soul so with this half sheet of paper don't put your name you just put this style as God speaks to you now if you're like you know what gosh Lisa, I prayed this last week for God to forgive me hey you don't have to put that down <laughs> Put your sins on a clear piece of paper that's before you. Paper. And maybe sins you're currently struggling with that you want us to ask God to forgive you. I also want to encourage you to write down people that you need to forgive. How many know forgiveness is so important to the Lord and to you? We need to start to forgive and release people that are us that have offended us and God wants you to forgive those because the Bible says how can you expect to receive forgiveness from the Lord if we don't forgive so list out those that you need to forgive extend that love and grace to others and finally because we are we are our harshest critic our worst enemy you need to forgive yourself as well so you can just write I forgive myself with the pen we're gonna give you this time Reflection. Yes. 
And if when you're done, just raise your hand and then we'll have the coaches come and direct you to the next station of that. Thank you.